all together. Jacinda Ardern became the world's youngest female head of government when she became New Zealand's Prime Minister aged just 37 four years ago. All together. Swept to power on a wave of popular support, quickly dubbed Jacinda Mania. The Labour Party leader promised relentless positivity in the election campaign that she went on to win, inspiring voters with her youthful liberalism in the same way that Canada's Justin Trudeau provided an antidote to the rise of right-wing big beasts on the world stage, most notably Donald Trump. Months after becoming Prime Minister, she announced that she was pregnant, and in June 2018, she took six weeks maternity leave, returning to work with a promise to cut child poverty and give new parents more paid leave. In 2019, Arden was widely praised for her leadership of the response to the Christchurch mosque shootings when 51 people were murdered in a terrorist attack. This is one of New Zealand's darkest days. She toughened the country's gun laws and refused to say the name of the attacker in speeches she made. He will, when I speak, be nameless. A year after that came the coronavirus pandemic. Once again, Ardern was held up as a model of leadership, moving swiftly to close the country's borders and using regular press conferences and social media posts to keep the population in the loop. Just checking in on everyone's um, Saturday. By mid-August this year, there'd been fewer than 3,000 cases, and even in mid-October, there had only been 28 deaths in New Zealand. The zero COVID strategy was not without its drawbacks though. By focusing on lockdowns rather than vaccines, New Zealand lagged behind many other countries when it came to inoculating the population. Easy in and out. By the start of July, just 9.2% of the population had been fully vaccinated, compared with 49.5% in the UK. It took New Zealand until mid-October to reach the 50% mark, and it's still playing catch-up. When the Delta variant hit, New Zealand had to prolong its lockdown, where other countries had been reopening. And instead of the worldwide praise, Ardern found herself under fire from some quarters, with the Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison describing his neighbour's COVID policy as absurd. He said no country could stay in the cave forever. By the start of October, Ardern had conceded that she would have to abandon the zero COVID strategy and move towards living with the virus, like the rest of the world. With this outbreak and with Delta, the return to zero is incredibly difficult, and our restrictions alone are not enough to achieve it quickly. In fact, for this outbreak, it's clear that long periods of heavy restrictions has not got us to zero cases. In some respects, COVID might have masked her government's shortcomings which are starting to come to light as attention shifts away from coronavirus. A flagship scheme to provide affordable housing has faltered, and the goals she set on child poverty and inequality have not been met. Meanwhile, the slow vaccine rollout has made for a potentially fragile economic recovery. The Reserve Bank of New Zealand has raised interest rates for the first time in seven years, and it's still too early to gauge the extent to which the Arden response to COVID has affected the country's long-term prospects.